Well, this commenter says that AI art is low-resolution garbage and can never be used for anything outside of just toys. Is that true? Here's some 8K samples shot on an 8K video camera as high detail as it gets of a notebook, a t-shirt, another t-shirt, and a sweatshirt, all printed with AI art. And one of the t-shirts actually made with my VHS glitch art that is definitely meant to be low-resolution garbage. They look sharp. They look crisp. They look great. Let's talk about what's required to do this with your own AI-generated art. I'm Addy. Welcome back to Analog Dreams. I've been away for a little while, been AFK for a while. I'm on day 14 of what was supposed to be like a three or four day studio renovation. You can see some preview of it in the background here. We're almost done, but I wanted to go ahead and get some more content out to you all. And I've been wanting to talk about this specific topic for like a month now. And that is how to scale your art appropriately from mid-journey, stable diffusion, what have you, to use in print. So I have pulled up Threadless, which is the shop I use for my merch, their recommended print sizes for their various, you know, print on demand articles. And so one is the apparel. So we have for t-shirts and the like, 4200 by 4800 pixels is what is recommended. You notice I'm not going to talk a whole lot about DPI here. There's the whole 72 DPI versus 300 DPI. Ultimately, that means nothing. That only matters if you make a new Photoshop or Affinity document and you choose instead of pixels, you go with inches. Then you need to set the resolution because that effectively controls what the pixel size is and you're just working with inches or you know centimeters, millimeters, whatever. But if you're using a pixel resolution, 7200 versus or 72 versus 300 DPI literally changes nothing. It is just the scale at which the pixels are printed on a physical canvas. Either 72 pixels are assigned per inch or 300 are. And obviously that affects the quality. You want everything to be 300 pixels per inch compatible for printing, but you don't need to worry about that as long as you achieve the high resolution. So we need 4200 by 4800 to print on t-shirts for it to look good. Now I have a couple upscale images here from Midjourney using the different render engines and upscale images available within Midjourney. And you can see here the resolution 1664 by 2432 for I believe the remaster. No, that's the beta. This is 1024 by 2048 for the normal max upscale. And this is 1408 by 2816 for the remaster upscale. And obviously these create very different images in the first place. But we're going to go with this one. So this one's actually one of the smaller ones because it's the normal upscale max. This is 1024 by 2048. Clearly, we have a little ways to go to get up to the size required for printing. Now, what I'm going to tell you not to do is not to just take your image, paste it in Photoshop on the... Uh, they, they release uh, templates for your apparel so you can like put the little layer on there or whatever put it on a high resolution thing hit control T and start scaling it up because this only uses the lossy scaling algorithms and it will end up coming out very blurry you want to do your scaling before it ends up on the actual canvas that it's on and that's going to be both in Photoshop and using additional tools so my workflow for this is the first upscale really high using AI upscalers because they do a great job at recreating the detail that you're going for Specifically, I use Topaz Labs Gigapixel. I know it's expensive software, so I'm going to show you some alternatives online. And I have a whole video coming towards ones you can use on your phone or tablet for mobile devices. But this is the UI for it. It is just an AI-based image upscaler. You drag in your image, which requires me to have actually saved it out first. One moment. You drag in your image. It gives you a preview of what it will look like scaled up versus the original size just blown up. See here, we get a lot of detail. And then you have a bunch of settings. Don't get too overwhelmed by this. And in fact, by default, it should have this little lightning check where it's automatically going to detect the best settings for you. You could theoretically use that, but you can see right now, we got a lot of highlights there from what's called ringing, uh, which are artifacts from scaling a little too high. So we're going to walk through your settings here. This is your preview. As I said, you can drag the little divider to see different areas. You can drag it around and it will have to render. You see the status in the bottom here. I have to re-render as you go for new areas. But then you have your resize mode. You can scale however much you want. You get a preview of that resolution down here. I usually go 4x to 6x depending on what I'm printing on. For t-shirts, uh, 2x is close but not good enough. So 4x would be about what you wanted for this work. Um, we're going to do the last mile scaling in Photoshop. I will show you how to get it the rest of the way looking great. But you see we got a lot of artifacts. So it has a bunch of different AI models to upscale with based on what the content is. So there's the standard model. There's one for line art stuff with specifically a ton of lines. You see, we even get more of that weird highlight kind of ringing, haloing artifact. We got art and CG. Great for 
art and CG. That's looking a little bit better already. We've got resolution, low resolution images for like just blurry photos. That one's actually not looking too bad. And then there's very compressed, which is going to help fight compression blocking and artifacts. Don't like that one so much. If you're having trouble keeping track of these, you have a button up here at the top so you can see different split views. So we can actually do a comparison view of all four. Let it render those out. And then you can go into an individual one and change which one it is because we have one that's duplicated here. So we will do, we've got art and CG, low resolution, very compressed, and we'll just do standard. And then you can get a preview for what the impact of this will be. So you can see standard has those artifacts on this specific image. I actually use standard a lot on other images. Art and CG is a little blurrier, but has a more natural look for the art we're going with. Low resolution is all right, has less of an impact of art and CG, but maybe that's what you want. And then very compressed isn't really doing it for me. So we're going to go with art and CG. So that's the one we select. And then you have settings down here below this. This is for suppressing noise. If you have a bunch of grain or, you know, RGB noise in your image, we're going to turn this off. We don't. And then remove blur will actually remove blurry from like being a blurry photo. We don't want that because in photos or art that's generated where the background's supposed to be blurry. You don't want it trying to compensate for that. So I'm actually going to turn both of those down. And then it has an option for face recovery. If you have a face in your image, it can help with that specifically a little bit better and detect those. I'm going to leave that turned off. Gamma correction, I'm just going to leave on. It helps with the gamma brightness levels. All right, so we have chosen our AI model. It shows here at the bottom we're going for from 1024 by 2048 up four times to 4096 by 8192. So we're going to click Save Image. You can choose basically to leave it at default. It'll be on source directory, so it'll just save it right next to your original image. But you can also come in here, like if you're using a JPEG source image, then you want to compress, you want to use PNG or TIFF to make it lossless, just so you don't have any extra unnecessary compression. We're going to click save. It's going to do its thing. It's going to process for a couple minutes here, depending on your hardware, and we're good to go. So now I'm going to close that. If you're not looking to pay for Gigapixel or you want some online options, my favorites are Waifu 2X, which is optimized for anime and line art style kind of comic booky stuff. Uh, but it will only go up to 2X, so you kind of have to keep going. But it is a great tool. You can run it locally. You can run it here online. And then Big JPEG is actually one that I use on tablets as well on my iPad. They have a great mobile app. And so you just select your image. We're going to come back to our image here. We're going to upload it. It They do have paid versus free plans. Uh, I am paid on mobile. I don't know if that'll transfer, but we can go. We're, we're using artwork. We're going to go four times. Do we want any noise reduction? We don't because there's no real inherent noise like a low resolution photo in an AI generated art. And we're going to click OK. And now this has to upload it to their servers, wait on their servers to queue it and process it, and then you'll download it back. But it's a similar idea. Once you have that image, again, don't just drop it on this canvas and start scaling it again. You actually want to open it as a new image in Photoshop here. So we have our 4096 by 8192 upscale image. We're gonna drag this to a new file in Photoshop and we're gonna scale it the rest of the way. So remember in our template from Threadless, we need it to be 4200 width is what they recommend. So we need to go to image, image size. We're gonna come down here to pixels and we're just gonna go 4200. So we can match the width. Again, if you change this, it's going to change that because it's basing it on your inches. We don't want to do that. So 4,200 goes up to 8,400. And the secret recipe here is this Preserve Details 2.0 resample algorithm. So resampling is basically how it interprets the size differences. This is relatively new within Photoshop and does a much better job of keeping those details. In fact, we can go down here by cubic. Can I make this window bigger? Go to something with like a lot of detail. All right, if we look at bicubic, that's really smooth. If we go to bilinear, it's going to get blurrier. This actually isn't a great example since we already AI upscaled it. But when you're getting it that last mile to the rest of the resolution that you want, 4200, 100% the way to go. We're going to click OK, and that's going to scale it up the rest of the way. And now we drag it onto this canvas. And you see it fills the width, and then we can do whatever blending or transforming we want to do from here. Once you have it up high enough, then using the bicubic sharper or automatic uh, scaling algorithm in here in the interpolation for your transform tool, whatever is on the default is probably fine. Doing that for downscaling is a lot cleaner than upscaling. So that is how we leave that there. So we're going to resize, make it fit our scene, drag it up. This isn't really an image I would use for a t-shirt, but you get the idea. Put it on there. Now you could leave it at that, 
if we zoom in, like there's some, like it's not the sharpest thing in the world, but it would probably be fine for just like an artsy shirt that's going to be, again, you know, printed into a shirt which has its own blurriness and texture associated with it. But if you want to enhance it from there, you can do, you know, brightness and contrast adjustments to help make it punch a little bit. Keep in mind, uh, depending on the shirt material you use, a lot of the colors are going to come out a little bit more punchy than you want. So you don't want to overdo it in the image here. But then there's one last little trick that I recommend, and that is duplicating your layer of your actual image here with Control J, putting it on top of any adjustments, changing your blending mode to overlay, and then come over here to filter, other, and high pass. And then you can zoom in if you want and adjust this radius. And it does all kinds of different looks based on your radius, but it is effectively filtering through details to help enhance your image. And so a little bit of this and maybe even like a sharpen filter on your original layer will help give it that extra bit of crispness. So you can see if we crank this all the way up, it's making it extra punchy. The, the highlights are brighter, the darker bits are darker. And so we only want a little of it here. I mean, this is a lot, but you get the idea. And then if I turn it on and off, that immediately takes it from what kind of could look kind of, you know, faded to this. And then you want to blend it by changing the opacity. So we will, again, start turning it down. Just turn it up a little bit till we get that little punch that we want. We don't want the whole thing. And yes, the opacity blending this will have a different effect than the radius of your high pass filter. And once we get it where we want, we can save that out as a transparent PNG. I mean, this doesn't have a transparent background, but you get the idea. Save it out as a PNG, upload it to Threadless or wherever you're printing your stuff or just print it out. I've printed out full page photos myself from this stuff. It looks fantastic. So yes, you can use AI generated art for printing on merch or paper or whatever. And yes, it can look fantastic. You just need to take the right steps for you to get there. If you're curious about Mid Journey's different upscaling algorithms and how I got to that point, I have a whole video on that linked below. I do hope you found this video helpful. I appreciate the incredible support on this channel thus far. I am sorry for the radio silence. Like I said, the new studio is going to be amazing. I'll post a couple teaser shots right now. And yeah, hope you enjoyed. Uh, let me know your questions in the comments below. Let's keep this conversation going. And remember to be kind. Rewind.